focus rose image and turn it into this image right here, all with the power of Topaz Sharpen AI. Now I'm going to be using Mask AI, Topaz Studio 2, Lightroom, and Photoshop. Uh, it's a full edit tutorial, so stay tuned and let's get started. I'm starting out here in Lightroom. Now, I just want to give you a little background on this image here. It's an out of focus image and it's really, really soft as you can see here. So it's basically a throwaway image, but I like the image. And um, so I want to resurrect this image using uh, Sharpen AI. And I want to show you how powerful Sharpen AI is for fixing uh, soft focus images. And it's the only software in the market that I know of that can do this kind of a job, all right? Let's take a look at my camera settings. This was shot at ISO 100, so it's very low noise. Uh, I used the 24 to 70 millimeter zoom, uh, shot at 64 millimeters, F4. I wanted that nice soft bokeh background, and I shot it 1 640th of a second handheld, okay? Now, the only thing I did in Lightroom was crop the image. So let me just uh, open up the crop tool here, and you can see there's my crop. If I want to print this image rather large, I can use uh, Gigapixel AI to do that. So I'm not worried about cropping my images. And if you watch some of my uh, videos in the past, you know I don't have a problem with cropping in on images. Not when I have Gigapixel AI. All right. Now under the basic adjustments here, you see I have nothing adjusted. Nothing whatsoever. And the only thing I did was... In detail, I shut my sharpening off, shut my noise reduction off, and left the color noise reduction on. Now, that's just my workflow. I like it that way. And the other thing I did was, if we go to uh, lens corrections, you'll notice I have the remove chromatic aberrations checked on and enable profile corrections checked on. So, other than that, we're going to send it into Photoshop now from Lightroom. So, I'm going to right-click and edit in... Photoshop 2020, and we'll get started with the uh, Sharpen AI. By the way, the reason I did not do any editing inside of Lightroom is because I wanted Sharpen AI to be able to look at this image just the way it was out of the camera and not to be influenced in any way by the uh, Lightroom editing, okay? So I'm going to duplicate my background layer, Command or Control J, depending if you're on a Mac or PC. Coming up to Filter, and I'm going to launch Sharpen AI. Here we are in Sharpen AI. Now, if you come up here to view, you see you have uh, different ways of viewing your image. A single view, a split view, and a side-by-side. -side. I'm on the side-by-side -side view, which is a view I like. I'm just going to uh, pull this uh, rose over so we can kind of see the bulk of the rose here. The edges here, out here. And right now it's in the manual mode. I'm in the sharpen mode right here. And as you can see... In this mode, it's not doing much. Let's put it on auto and see what it does here. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And uh, it's a relatively soft image. I mean, it's a super soft image. It's an unusable image, actually. So there's the sharpen. So it can't help this image, right? Let's try stabilize. I don't think it's going to really do anything either here. But let's see what it can do here. Don't forget, we have the three models. Sharpen, stabilize, and focus. Okay, it's slightly better, but... Not really there yet. Let's try the focus model, which is the model I would think would work. And so we'll try that one here. Okay, so here we go. See what that looks like. Now remember, we're in the auto mode here. But look at all the detail that it brought back in here. Around the edges and things like that. Let's maybe move it over and up. Something like that. Get another look at it. Now remember, we're in the uh, auto mode. And it's doing a really nice job. Now let me go ahead and put it in manual. Uh, suppress noise is at 50, and I don't see any noise in the image, so I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and bump up the sharpness. Let's, let's go crazy with it here and see what uh, extra sharpening we can get out of it, or extra focus, really. I mean, look at that. Look at that focus. Now that might be a little too much. There's a few little issues right here that I don't like so much, but I'll, I'm going to fix that in Photoshop. I could mask it out here, but I'm going to show you my workflow. This is the way I work, so I'm going to show you my workflow. I'm just going to pull the sharpness back slightly, give it a little less sharpness, but man, look at the detail it brought out in here. Isn't that crazy? Look how soft it was here and up in here, and it brought detail in here. That's that artificial intelligence magic. i got to tell you, it's pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and click Apply, and we'll send this right back into Photoshop. 
Well, here we are back in Photoshop. So uh, here's our sharpened image. Look at that, how beautiful that looks. Let me shut the eye off. So here's the original. And let me even zoom in so you can really see the image here. So there's the original, and this is after Sharpen AI. Pretty amazing, right? Pretty great job. There's a couple issues I'm going to take care of. But first, I'm going to send this into the Camera Raw filter just to make the adjustments on the image that I did not do in Lightroom. Now, normally I make my adjustments first in Lightroom, the initial Camera Raw adjustments. But when you have an out-of-focus image like this, don't do that. Um, send it right into Photoshop run Sharpen AI on it, and then do your adjustments from there, okay? So I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the background layer. I don't really have to here, but I'm just doing it. Command J or Control J to duplicate it. Come up here to Filter. Let's go to uh, Camera Raw Filter. And I'm just going to hit the Auto button here and see what kind of a look I get. And that looks really good. Uh, I might just maybe pull my highlights back just a little bit just a tiny little bit here and maybe my exposure I might just take my exposure back a little bit not much maybe right there I think that looks good I'm happy with that I'm gonna click OK and send it right back into Photoshop so here's my before and here's my after now if I option or alt click the background layer you can see the original image Look at that, unusable blurry image. And now, after the magic of Sharpen AI and some Photoshop, that's what we have. Now that's looking really good. Now for some cleanup. I told you there's some issues in this uh, rose that I want to fix. I mean, there's a little issue here with a little bit of a tear in the rose here and here. And I didn't like what was happening up here. So what I'm going to do is just get a, a blank pixel layer and get my healing brush the shortcut is j for that make my brush a little bit smaller make sure that you have sample all layers checked on and what i'm going to do is just go over this line right here and let the magic of the healing brush heal it and sometimes you have to go over it a couple times maybe right here here again here this little line right here i don't necessarily need that and maybe this little light right here, I don't need that. So just like that, you can get rid of that kind of stuff. And maybe this little bit of white on here, I don't like that. I can get rid of that. Let's heal this edge up here on the rose. Yeah. But this healing brush is amazing. And this little cut in the leaf right here, let's fix that. As you can see, I'm hitting it a couple different times till I'm really satisfied with it. Yeah, that looks good. Let me zoom back out. Oh, there's one little... These little light areas like this bug me, so I like to clean things up. Because I want my rose to look really cool. So, there we go. Now, the other thing I want to heal is this leaf right here and this leaf right here. I'm going to make my healing brush a little bit larger here and... I'm just going to paint over this like this and like that it goes away and this leaf right here it's light and it bugs me it it is gone let me hit command Z I don't like that I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller just paint right here yeah there we go and just undo if you mess up okay and this little leaf right here I don't think we need it so I'm gonna get rid of it now this is a little light right here and I don't like that and this light here on this stem right here, I don't like that. And I'll show you how to fix that next. My specialty is flower photography. And I'm teaching you these tips and tricks too that, that I've learned myself and that I want to share with you guys. And these are powerful little tips and tricks. Now, I can use this blank pixel layer for the next phase. And that would be, I'm going to use paint to paint over this light area. I'm going to match the color of this leaf right here. And also going to darken this down and this stem down as well. So to do that, I'm going to add a new pixel layer. So come to this icon here with a little plus on it, give it a click, and there, there comes up a new pixel layer. Now, get your brush tool. The shortcut is B for the brush tool now. I'm going to make my brush tool relatively large, around that size right there. Uh, you'll notice my flow is on 5%. Five per, five Very important uh, so you can build up the adjustment slowly. What I'm going to do is just sample colors around this light area, like this darker color right in here, and I'm just going to paint on that blank pixel there. You see that? How I can just darken that, and I'm going to overshoot this a little bit. This is blurry, so painting is very effective here. 
I might get some of this darker color right in here, make my brush a little smaller, and just paint up along this edge here. All I have to do is make this look believable. I just don't want our viewer's eye going to these light areas, because your eye will go always to these light areas. Even in this corner here, I'm just going to darken it down a little bit right here. Now, I think I can use that same color. Let's try it and just paint. I have a nice soft edge brush, by the way. I'm just painting down this stem, okay? And just darkening that down a little bit, even over here. And with that low flow, I can keep building up my paint strokes. And on this edge here, see how that just keeps our eye from, you know, going down to these areas. And I might even go right under here a little bit, like so. And even this area right down here, let's sample this darker color and make my brush a little larger and just paint right here. And again, it's already blurry, so nobody will ever know that you painted on it. Even this area here, it's a little... Okay, just like so. To keep things tidy, I just want to combine these three layers together. So I'm going on the top layer coming to the layer one copy layer, holding my shift key down, that selects all these layers. I'm gonna right click and say merge layers and they all come together. It just tidies things up. Now my workflow is to uh, flat my image out at the end of my editing process and save it and it goes back into Lightroom. And then from Lightroom, if I need to print it out, I can do it from there or send it to social media from there. Uh, but if I'm not completely done with an image, I will save it with the layers intact. But that's just my workflow. You don't have to work that way, but I just wanted to point that out. Now let's go ahead and duplicate the background again. And I'm going to send it into Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, which is what I like to call it. And once I'm in here, I want to do a couple things to it. I want to add a little bit more crispness to my uh, flower, to my beautiful rose here. So I'm going to add filter and get a wonderful tool in here or filter called Precision Detail. And I'm going to bump up the small detail in the overall just a little bit. Or a lot, depending what I need, actually. I don't want to go crazy on it because, hey, it is a delicate little rose and I just want a little bit more sharpness there. Let's try some medium detail. That's too much. Hey, but don't be afraid to pull these sliders. I'm sure you've heard me say that in the past if you've watched my videos. And large detail, do I want anything there? If anything, just a very slight amount, like a 0.02. Now, if I hold my space bar down, you can see the before and the after. But just look at the rose itself. See that little extra sharpness that comes out of it? And I like that. I don't like what it's doing to the background. So I'm going to get one of my favorite uh, tools, a layer masking tool inside of uh, Topaz Studio 2. And I'm going to uh, invert this by coming down to the layer mask, these three little dots. Click that and click invert. Get a brush and transparency up the whole way to a white paint swatch here and we can adjust our radius uh, size and softness at 50 percent my edge wear is turned on which i want because i just want to grab the flower itself and that edge wear is going to be nice for masking these are great masking tools inside of topaz studio too hats off to them for this great masking they give us with these edge wear with this edge wear technology which is really amazing so I'm just going to paint in there. Plus, I like the overlay, overlay they let us see here, which is nice. So there you go. There's my detail just added to my flower. And if I want too strong, I can take the opacity and maybe just ease off a little bit. And I might just do that, maybe to around a 90, somewhere around in there. Now let's hold my space bar down. There's the before and there's the after. See, it just makes that rose just a little bit sharper, which is really beautiful. And the background is staying soft. I'm doing one last thing. I'm gonna run this into Mask AI and use that really great feature inside of there to blur the background and darken it slightly, all inside of Mask AI next. So we come up to Filters and go to Plugins and select Mask AI, and that opens up Mask AI. And remember, Mask AI uses a tri-map uh, technology, which is really cool and easy to use. It starts out with a compute brush. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, the brush size. And I'm just going to paint around the edge of this beautiful rose right here. And then we'll, then we'll uh, use a red paint bucket to remove the background. So click on the red paint bucket and click on your canvas. 
And then uh, I'm going to put this in the, I'll try contrast this time, because I don't think this is a really hard selection. So I'm going to uh, click compute, and in a second or two here, there it is. Now let's go ahead to this really great tool where it says background, click that on, and click on blur. And check this out. Now the image on the left is showing my tri-map, so I'm going to just shut off the tri-map so we can see the original. Now that's way too much blur, but I do want blur in here. So let's go ahead and take the strength back to a believable level. I'm going to start out by removing it the whole way, and then let's just bump it up a little bit. I just want a little extra beautiful softness back there. And this is a great technique. Do not forget this one. Okay, maybe something like that. Okay, now there's one other really cool feature here, and that is we have all these controls here. What if I want to darken that background? Now, remember, we're using the uh, the blur, and it's and it's set to background here, so when I adjust the exposure, it's only going to affect the back background, which is, isn't that really cool? So I just want to darken it up a little bit, and it makes this rose just pop off the page here. Let me just zoom in and make sure I have no issues on my rose here with the masking. And yeah, there's a little spot right here, so I'm gonna go to the mask here and get my keep brush and make it smaller and maybe just paint along the edge here like so and see how that just fills that right in. And maybe just right here and here. And I love this uh, mask AI, it is amazing. And I love this blurry background, so you gotta, gotta give it a try. All right, I think we're good to go. I'm going to zoom back out. So look at the image on the left, and now look at the image on the right. Isn't that beautiful? A little softness in the background can make a very elegant flower image. I'm going to click Apply, and that will send us back into uh, Topaz Studio 2. But you have a choice here, Composite or Transparent. This is important. Do not choose Transparent. If you want a blurry background, choose Composite. So click that, and now we're going to be back into Topaz Studio 2. One last thing on this image, it's going to be real quick, add filter, vignette tool, okay? And right there it looks beautiful. I might just pull the opacity down. I'm not going to even make any adjustments in here because I don't really have to. I'm just going to ease back on the opacity a little bit. And let's uh, hold my space bar down. Here's my before and here's my after. So before and after. I'm totally satisfied with that. I'm going to go ahead and click accept. And that'll bring us right back into Photoshop. Now, if I option click the background layer, let's see where we started from. So we came from here. Look at that super blurry image. I'm telling you, it's, a, it's an image I'd have to throw away. But we went from there to here. So I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial today. Let me go ahead and save this out and bring it back into Lightroom. So I'm just going to right click on the top layer because I am done. I'm happy with my image. I'm going to right click and click flatten image. Uh, and then I'm going to come up here to file and just choose save. My image is saved. And now when I go over to Lightroom, we see the image. Now, let's compare the two images. So here's this image right here and here's the original here. So I'm going to command or control click it. And let me uh, type my N key to show the both images up on the screen at once. I'm going to get rid of my side panels here. Turn my lights out. So the image on the left is the edited image. The image on the right is the original. Now tell me, with any other software than Sharpen AI, you could turn that image on the right to that image on the left in terms of the focus only. I mean, granted, the editing, yes, you could. But look at the, look at the focus there. That image does not have to be thrown away, and uh, Sharpen AI has saved my day. Well, there you have it, Sharpen AI to the rescue. Uh, really happy with the way this turned out, and I'm so impressed every time I use Sharpen AI. I really couldn't live without it. Super great product, along with Topaz Denoise AI, another excellent piece of software that I don't see how anybody can actually live without. Um, Hey, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and I hope you learned a lot. If you like this video today, please give it a like, and then share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.